What is happening guys back at you with another video so we recently had the newest Tim Burton film Beetlejuice Beetlejuice come out in theaters I have a review on that movie if you want to check out the review now on the channel but in this video I'll be going through all of Tim Burns directed movies and his filmography all 20 movies will be ranked in this video going from the bottom to the top so without further ado let's go ahead and get into this coming at the bottom for me is going to be Dark Shadows now this was a second time watch for me I haven't watched it in many years since basically since it first came out probably around that time and basically I feel about the same I did the first time watching this this honestly this movie is just not for me it just feels like it's all over the place I don't get connection with any of the characters this one is just it's not entertaining for me honestly I don't get any kind of entertainment out of this movie it's kind of boring at times too so I can't really say that much about this movie to be honest that's why it comes at the bottom for me oh yeah Chloe Grace Moretz randomly turns into a werewolf in this movie <laughs> that was something I forgot about that coming at the next spot is going to be Planet of the Apes the 2001 remake and with this one this one doesn't even feel like a Tim Burton movie this one feels like your normal generic Hollywood movie it doesn't really have Tim Burton's you know Tim Burton's vision or Tim Burton's you know touch on this movie really there's like nothing to really you know <laughs> say about this movie too much or you know get excited about this movie honestly I uh, you know I haven't watched this movie in like a good 20 plus years I did rewatch it a couple months back in preparation for the newest Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes movie so that was like my time you know my rewatch whenever I did watch it and I haven't watched it in like a good 20 plus years at that point and I still kind of feel the same way as I did when I watched it for the first time when I was younger, when I was a kid at that time, where I really did not enjoy this movie. Uh, it doesn't really do anything for me. And, you know, as far as the Planet of the Apes franchise goes, this one is definitely one of the weaker ones. I will say the practical stuff does look good. You know, they have some of the good ape makeup going on in this movie. Yeah, other than that, this one is definitely not one of my favorites in Tim Burton's filmography. Next up on the list is going to be Corpse Bride. Now, I know a lot of people are probably going to get you know in the comments and bashing on me about this one but i gotta be honest like this was my second time re-watching this movie i watched it back when it first came out back when i was a kid and honestly i still kind of feel the same about this movie this movie just isn't for me you know and that's not you know trying to bash on a movie or anything like that you know this movie has its fans out there and i know that it has a lot of fans out there with for this movie but you know this second rewatch that I, you know upon the second rewatch I still feel the same way. This movie is just not for me. I don't really connect with this movie. Um, the animation is great in here and all that. You know, I believe they're using stop motion and things like that. So that's that's what's that's a good thing about the movie. I will admit about the movie. But other than that, you know, I don't really connect with the characters. This movie just isn't for me. And we get to Alice in Wonderland. I and mean, with this one, it's a watchable movie. I wouldn't say it's a bad movie or anything. Any means by that, you know, it's another Disney live action remake. Just one of the ones that he did that's going to be on this list. And for the most part, I could watch this. It's a watchable movie. I wouldn't say it's bad. I could get through it and watch it. It has some interesting concepts and interesting ideas going on here. It definitely has the feeling of a Tim Burton movie. But, you know, typically it's not one I go back to rewatch a whole lot. I've probably seen it maybe a total of two or three times ever. So it's not one I go back to rewatch, but I think it's at least a watchable, interesting movie. And we have Dumbo, the other live action remake, Disney live action remake that Tim Burton directed. And I remember checking this one out in theaters. And it was really honestly just a total, uh, you know, wing it kind of a movie theater experience to where I just went to the theater. I didn't even expect to watch this one. And this one just happened to be on at the time I went to the theater. So I decided to just check it out, see what goes up with it. And by, at that time when I watched it for the first time, first time in theaters, I was like, I would say super surprised, but I was like saying, thinking to myself, like, hmm, that's not actually bad. It wasn't that bad, actually, you know. And then I watched it for like a second time, and I might have seen it a third time. I think it was last year. It was like my third time re-watching this movie. And it kind of goes down a little bit. Each time I rewatch it, this movie kind of goes down and down a little bit more. And I don't know. It doesn't really feel too much of a Tim Burton movie to where, you know, has his touch in there or his ideas really in there. I think they were saying, like, this one is, like, one of the ones he did he actually did not want to direct or anything like that you know you got your typical tim burn uh casuals in here michael king comes out dan devito comes out you know other than that you know the characters i don't really connect with any of these characters you know you probably watch this movie just because you want to see dumbo you know dumbo's cute in this movie and all that but i mean it's not enough to you know garner to be able to 
rewatch this movie a whole lot. And we have Mars Attack, and this one was probably my second time rewatching it, or at least I remember watching parts of this movie when I was a kid, whenever this movie came out. And this one, <laughs> this one is kind of a weird experience of a movie. You know, it's kooky, it's wacky, it's it's just all over the place. Aliens attacking Earth, and you know, people and these characters in the movie trying to survive and all that stuff. So it's at least a fun watch of a movie. You know, I had some fun with it. You know, nothing more really. This is just a, a bonkers movie. And we have Sweeney Todd, and this one was probably my second time rewatching this movie. And I honestly forgot how much singing was in this movie. And yes, I know this is a musical. It's based on a musical. It's a musical movie. I already knew ahead of time before watching this that there was going to be songs and music in this movie. I just didn't know. I just basically forgot how much was in this movie though. Like how much singing was going to go on in this movie. How much music is going on in this movie. Literally like half the dialogue, almost at least half the dialogue in this movie was literally just them singing the songs and stuff and it's not like the songs are bad or anything like that it was just like a little too much for me it's a little too much for my taste so this one is an interesting story it's kind of a tragic story at, at its core you know you got johnny depp as the main character sweeney todd who comes back after many years trying to look for his wife and daughter and he ends up killing his wife in the end of the movie without realizing it and it's, it's a tragic story. It was definitely a very interesting watch and just how tragic this story actually is. And we have Frank and Weenie and this was a first time watch for me and interesting enough this was turned out to be like a basically a Frankenstein story. You know you kind of pick up on it as, uh, as you're going along watching this movie. You pick up on the clues and you find, find out that this is definitely a Frankenstein sort of story going on. And I can say this movie you know depending on how you are if you happen to have a, a pet or a dog of your own. I can see how this movie might actually be able to hit you in the feels a little bit. You know, it's definitely a story about a, a boy and his dog. And, you know, once the dog dies, tries to bring him back to life. So, it definitely gets you in the heartstrings and all. And make you feel for something. But honestly, you know, uh, not a bad movie overall. Uh, I enjoyed my time with it. And we have Sleepy Hollow. And what this one was another first time watch for me. And I like the aesthetic of this movie. This one has great aesthetic and it definitely feels like Tim Burton made this movie. But I will say though that this movie kind of tends to drag a little bit in a couple spots here and there for me. And maybe my experience with this movie was kind of hindered a little bit because I was a little tired when I actually did watch this movie. So I will at least give this a second watch and give it a second chance maybe down the line. But... To be honest, this is definitely not one of his stronger movies. We have Big Eyes, and this was another first time watch for me. And this one was definitely an interesting one. This was an interesting movie to where it's honestly like a cautionary tale. You know, talking about greed, jealousy, things like that going on in this movie. And just overall interesting movie, you know, based on a true story also. That was kind of interesting how that's actually based on a true story. And just the, the story that you give this movie is very interesting to where it's like, you know, just everything that plays out the way it plays out and just the way it all culminates in the end is just overall was a very interesting watch charlie in the chocolate factory now i don't think this is a bad movie at all it's very interesting it has tim burton <laughs> written all over it when it comes to this movie and as far as this movie goes i mean it's not the movie i go to when i want to you know watch a chocolate factory movie you know of course i go to the original Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory movie with Gene Wilder. That's my preferred one. But with this one, I think it's very, you know, this is fun. It's a fun one. Uh, definitely has an interesting take on adapting the whole story and the way they're adapting some of these characters, especially when it comes to Willy Wonka. Johnny Depp is so, it's kind of fascinating what, the way he portrays this character of Willy Wonka and his own way that he does it so with this movie this one is at least you know somewhat solid watch you know like i said it's not my go-to but i could at least watch this one we get to ed wood and this was another first time watch for me and this one is very very interesting to where you have this so-called worst director as it was saying uh you know this i guess this is sort of like a biopic or you know based on true story kind of thing going on with this movie and it's completely in black and white. That was a very interesting take on that to have it in black and white. And just the way that Johnny Depp plays his character or, you know, plays this person who is supposedly the so-called worst director of all time, as they said in the movie. And it's just interesting to, for Johnny Depp to play this character, an interesting scene, this kind of director, how he is portrayed and 
how he comes across in this movie to where he's very determined, he perseveres, he does anything and everything he can to become this director because it's like his dream. He loves making movies, he loves movies themselves, so he's like trying to do anything and everything he can. And then he, along the lines of that too, he happens to you know don this friendship between him and Bella Lugosi, the actor, which takes a very interesting turn in this movie to where it's very interesting to see how that friendship develops over time in this movie and how everything goes down and everything so i would say at least for my first time watching it was definitely a very interesting one and we have peewee's big adventure and this was a first time watch for me as far as i remember it's the first time watch for me i seen you know i seen clips here and there of peewee's different things going on uh you know the peewee show or whatever the peewee movies were those weren't really things i grew up with it was a little before my time i would say probably so with this one this was <laughs> this was honestly a fun kind of experience because you know with watching this basically for the first time it was like what am i going to get into i know this is supposed to be kind of geared towards kids and all that so it was kind of interesting to see what was going to happen but honestly it was just a overall fun experience it was kind of hilarious in this movie also to where it's like peewee's just this childlike character and you're like interested and you know intrigued on what he's going to do next that's going to just be funny overall and hilarious and all that and it's just hilarious the way this movie is to in a way it plays out to where he just goes on his cross country trip to retrieve his bike and it's just it had laugh out loud funny moments in this movie i honestly busted out laughing a couple of times here and there so it was just hilarious time with watching this movie for the first time and just seeing all the different crazy shenanigans and hilarious moments that peewee got into so in that aspect it was honestly entertaining to watch and rest in peace to paul rubens we have miss peregrine's home for peculiar children and this was a first time watch for me also so with this one i like the the concepts that it introduces and here it has some interesting concept and interesting ideas and i was very intrigued on the premise of it and just going through this you know the different concepts that was kind of you know portraying this movie you know dealing with time travel dealing with these peculiar children that have powers and talents and all that so it has a lot of interesting ideas going on i honestly was intrigued with this whole setup and this premise of the movie and just intrigued by this world you know honestly i would spend some more time in this world if they made another movie in this inside this world you know i would definitely be intrigued by that see where they could take the story or you know dealing with other different characters in here in this you know this whole world and be able to find other children you know other peculiar children see what their powers could be and just overall continue the story it'll be very intriguing i would actually honestly and check that out if they actually did continue and we get to the newest movie of beetlejuice beetlejuice tim burns newest directed movie in theaters now and i gotta say i really enjoyed this sequel this legacy sequel i had a lot of fun with it the biggest problem with this movie though i would say is that it definitely tends to feel a little overstuffed at times and that just comes down to the many plot lines that they have like it's almost like every character has their own plot line going on and you know as we're going through the movie and watching the movie you're going through all these different plot lines going on and it tends to feel overstuffed and then and these plot lines of all these characters or at least some of the side characters they got resolved so quickly that it just made the side characters feel almost unnecessary to the film like you could have taken the side characters out and it, le it almost feels like they didn't really affect the film overall or any of the major plot lines going on they were fun the side characters are fun in this movie to watch but it just they just almost felt like it was unnecessary due to their all their plot lines just getting so resolved so quickly and just felt like they weren't needed in there. So that's just the major problem I have with this movie that it just tends to feel a little overstuffed at times throughout. But other than that, I really enjoyed this movie. I had a lot of fun with it. I really do like it. I think this would be a great addition to uh, put into the movie rotation for Spooky Season along with the first Beetlejuice movie. And I just got to say that overall, I'm glad we at least got this legacy sequel. And we have Big Fish. And this was definitely one of my more anticipated ones to rewatch in Tim Burns' filmography. It's been so many years that I haven't rewatched this movie. And I've been really wanting to rewatch it. And, you know, I got to say, I really did enjoy my time with this movie. I still enjoy this movie. And it definitely has that whimsical sense of style with this movie. The way that Tim Burton just directs this movie. With this movie, it definitely has like just an interesting story going on. You know, you have this son that's trying to kind of reconnect with his dad. 
and you know his dad has these tales that he has that he tells the stories these tall tales that he tells and you know the son of course doesn't believe in these tall tales you know he believes they're myths he believes they're lies that he, his dad's just conjuring up and just makes you think in this movie you know how truthful are his stories really are and just the sense that these stories are just whimsical in a way they're intriguing the way that he just goes on his journey to you know he tells a story of how he met his wife he tells a story of how he met all these different people going on even a giant of sorts so in that aspect it's just interesting the way that he just tells this story he has all these you know tales that he tells to his son you know and his son doesn't believe him and you know in a way his son tries to reconnect with him and by the end of the film you just sense you feel this sense of you know just heartfelt story going on and it's just this movie is just a movie that i am glad that i got to rewatch because i really just enjoy it next up we have edward scissorhands and with this movie it was not necessarily it could have been a full time it was like a full time first time watch for me because i remember probably watching bits and pieces maybe here and there when i was younger as a kid or something but i haven't really fully sat down and just you know fully watched this movie from front to end so this was kind of like that first time watch for me. And I gotta say, I really did enjoy this movie. I like the aesthetic that Tim Burton does in this movie. The way he directs this movie. And has this vibe in this movie. You know, Johnny Depp is great as Edward Scissorhands in this movie. The way that this movie plays out to where it's like a tragic story in a sense. You know, you're dealing with this outcast. And the way that everything plays out in this movie. And the way he just ends. It's almost like a tragic story in a way. But it's very interesting, one thing that happened in this movie, it was kind of surprising in a way also, is how kind of accepting, in the beginning, it was kind of surprising how accepting people were, you know, they kind of had open arms and inviting Edward in to their homes and, you know, having them having him around, just kind of accepting him in a way and kind of helping him in a way, it was kind of surprising in that effect, the, how the people were, but of course the way that the movie plays out, it just goes downhill and it turns tragic after that and the way that it just ends it's honestly it was very interesting i did actually enjoy this movie with this watch this first time watching away and honestly i can see myself going back to rewatch this movie in the future and we have batman returns this is the sequel to you know michael keen as batman of course and i really do enjoy this movie it's one of my favorite batman movies the way that we have the inclusion of uh catwoman played by michelle pfeiffer dan devito playing the penguin it's uh very interesting this movie's a lot of fun i'll say this movie is definitely a lot of fun you know has the christmas vibes going on the way that tim burton directs this movie the aesthetic of this movie the way that this movie was you know if you're able to catch those little hints and <laughs> adult references in this movie even though this movie i believe was right pg or it might have been pg-13 i don't know uh it's just funny being able to catch those little references here and there and all that but just the way this movie was, like, I enjoyed this movie. It's definitely one of my favorite Batman movies, like I was saying. Just the way that the aesthetic and you know, the way that he treats the the villains in this movie to where he really focuses on them. Because they really do. Like, the villains in this movie, when it comes to, like, Catwoman and uh, uh, the Penguin, you know, they really do feel like outcasts in this movie. Or, you know, they felt like outcasts. And they put them at the forefront of this movie. They become villains. And the way that he really shines a light to that. It's very interesting the way that Tim Burton shoots that in this movie. The where he shines a light upon these outcasts. And the way that he shoots them in this movie is very interesting. But like I was saying, this movie is still just so much fun. And it's one of my favorite Batman movies. We get to the number two spot and that's going to be the first original Beetlejuice movie. Uh, I love this movie. I love this movie. It's a movie I usually put on almost every spooky season around this time. I just pop it in. I have fun with this movie. Michael Keane. Tour de Force, uh, when he plays Beetlejuice, amazing. Honestly, you know, why not a writer in here? Catherine O'Hara is over the top in this movie at times and funny. And, uh, you know, you got Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis in here also, too. So, they're a lot of fun. This movie's just a lot of fun. I just like the kookiness and wackiness of this movie. The way that this movie has a lot of adult things in this movie. <laughs> if you're able to catch a lot of adult things in this movie. Even though it's rated PG, <laughs> it's very funny how that got away how they got away with that and that that just slipped through the cracks and all that stuff but i, I love this movie honestly it's one of my favorite tim burr movies i have a lot of fun with it like i said ever so often i try to watch it around the spooky season time and just have a lot of fun with it i love this movie honestly and we get to the number one spot and that is going to be the original batman from 1989 this one is definitely one of my favorite batman movies 
and just the way that we get Michael Keaton. This is kind of, you know, when you're thinking about it, it's kind of weird and it's kind of interesting how Michael Keaton is playing Batman in this movie. This movie came out in 1989. Just the previous year, he played Beetlejuice. So it just goes to his acting talent, the way that this guy just is able to play different characters to where it's like, Beetlejuice, you got Beetlejuice on one end of the spectrum and then Batman on the other end, it's like, it doesn't even match or it doesn't even, even like feel like it's the same person playing them, but he does it. He does it really well. Just the way that he's able to portray Bruce Wayne and Batman in this movie. But going along with that is we have Jack Nicholson as the Joker in this movie. A phenomenal performance from Jack Nicholson as the Joker. One of my favorite performances uh, when it comes to the character of the Joker. And just the way that Tim Burton shoots this movie to where he kind of focus it, focuses in on Joker a little more than Batman overall. You know, we get a great you know balance between them. But the way that he really shines a light to Joker himself to where we get a lot of great scenes with Joker. The way his origin is set up. The way he... He finally becomes a Joker and how he is. It's all very interesting. And the way that Tim Burton just tells his story and directs it and shoots it the way that he does it. To where it's very interesting throughout. To where you get a balance between both characters of Batman and the Joker. And just feels over the top at times. The way that Gotham is in this movie feels like its own character. So colorful. The aesthetic of it. It just takes on this interesting to where it, it just feels like its own character. Like the city of Gotham feels like a character in this movie. It's just interesting in that aspect. The way that this movie is. is definitely one of my favorite movies. Favorite Batman movies. And I was listening to an interview recently. Michael Keane was talking about how he says that this Batman movie. To where he was saying how, you know, Tim Burton and the Batman movie were really at the forefront of comic book movies. Like, you could definitely say how this movie along with like Superman or, you know, Blade movies or X-Men, Spider-Man movies. Were really like at the forefront of setting up the standard for comic book movies. And I told, like, you know, hearing that in this interview that he was talking about, I really honestly get what he's saying about that because it's almost like what would comic book movies be like today if we did not get this movie specifically so i'm glad that we were able to get this movie i'm glad that tim Byrne, you know put his touch on this movie be able to you know give us this movie the way he you know shot it and everything like that michael keen is great as batman in this movie My, jack nicholson amazing as a joker this movie has always been a favorite of mine so that is going to do it for Tim Burns' filmography, his uh, directed movies, all 20 movies. Uh, definitely was an interesting uh, time, you know, going through his filmography, checking out these movies. Some of them were first time watches. Very interesting. It was very interesting overall, I gotta say. Uh, so yeah, that's how I would actually rank them. You know, worst to best, bottom from top, however you want to take it. But let me know down in the comments below, how would you rank Tim Burns' movies? What are some of your favorites that he has? Definitely would like to hear your thoughts on it. But that is going to do it all for this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Remember to subscribe and turn notification on so you know I post another video. Hope you have an awesome day. And I'll see you on the next one.